Backwards Moon, Chapter 16. It was night when Bracken and Ben and the raccoon reached the city on the Great River. Lines of cars streamed in front of them, behind them, and on either side. Lights flashed and whizzed. Green signs saying things like Exit 24 came careening out of the glare, hovered above, then vanished as the pickup truck sped underneath. I don't like this, muttered the raccoon. He held his tail, fingering it nervously. I don't like this at all. Ben leaned over the wheel, his big knuckled hands gripping it tightly. Every once in a while, he muttered something under his breath. The raccoon turned to Bracken. How about using that necklace of yours? Just wish us to the house and out of this. Bracken touched the cool, smooth beads. It only works three times, she told the raccoon. It has to be dire need, and it has to be a wise wish. Look, said the raccoon. He put his little hand on her arm. Wise means not getting killed, doesn't it? And dire, believe me, I know dire when I see it. Bracken shook her head, but you would still have one wish left. I just don't think I should, said Bracken. Three wise wishes. If you made an unwise one, maybe it wouldn't be granted and it wouldn't count against your wishes. Or maybe it would and one of your precious wishes would be wasted. She was still puzzling and worrying when Ben spoke up. I'm guessing this house you're looking for is an old house. He said, if it was on that map of yours, it's got to be. So it's in the old part of the city. I'm going to try to find the oldest neighborhood and then maybe something will come to you, huh? I mean, if it's a magic house and all, maybe you'll recognize it somehow. I'll try, said Bracken. The raccoon sighed heavily. Ben stopped the pickup truck at what Bracken now knew was a gas station. The farmer had bought gas several times already and talked for a long time with a man inside. Bracken and the raccoon watch through the big glass windows. He's a good human, said the raccoon. There are some, you know. He is a good human, said Bracken. Ben came back. Guy thought I was kind of nuts, he said, climbing onto the seat and starting the truck, but I think I know where to go, sort of. After a time, he swerved from the giant road onto a narrower one. Soon there were fewer gleaming lighted buildings and fewer cars. We should hit the river pretty soon, he said. The guy said there are a lot of old houses along the river. It took several more gas stations, but at last they found the river. It ran, dark and quiet, at the bottom of a deep and forested gorge. Houses all along it overlooked the river. This is a nice, quiet neighborhood, said the farmer. The street was lined with big, spreading trees and street lanterns like the one in the cyclopedia. In the far distance, Bracken saw a bridge, its line of lights reflecting in the dark water. What do you think of these? asked Ben. These houses seem like they were built a long time ago. Do any of these look likely? I don't know what to look for, said Bracken miserably. I can't think. They drove on, past house after house after house. At last, Ben stopped the truck. I don't think this is going to work. Bracken, the raccoon turned his little bandit face to her. This is dire need. She looked out over the river, her heart beating hard. The bridge's string of glimmering lights reminded her of a necklace. Perhaps it's an omen. Bracken thought. She put her hand to her necklace and wished. At first, nothing seemed to happen. Bracken put her face in her hands. Don't cry, said Ben. Please. But Bracken was crying. There was no other sound in the pickup truck. Bracken, said the farmer suddenly. Wait, I feel something. Bracken snuffled and stopped. I think something did happen when you wished. It's like this funny feeling behind my eyes, and it seems like I think maybe I know where to go, said Ben. You do, said Bracken. Seems like it. Start the truck, said the raccoon. The necklace comes through again. They drove along the river. Ben slowed at a corner and paused for a second, then turned onto a street that led away from the river. They turned several more times, Ben pausing before each turn. Then they stopped in front of a big castle-like house. The farmer shut off the truck and its noise died away. Is this it? He asked. Bracken rolled down the window. I don't know. Maybe. The farmer hurried around and opened the door for her. Bracken got out and all three walked slowly toward the house. That wall, said Bracken, stopping. What do you suppose is behind it? A garden, I bet, said the farmer. Big places like this. They have those formal gardens. There's magic in that garden, said Bracken. I can feel it. She hobbled toward the wall, then craned her neck to look up. It was very tall wall all covered with vines. 
There was a door in the wall, but when Ben tried it, it was locked. I can climb over and take a look around, said the raccoon. He grabbed onto the vines and pulled himself upward. Nettle tried the remembering spell again, then held her finger spark high. The door, she whispered, gazing at Dee and Anna in turn. Oh, please remember. I can't, said Dee. It's all a fog. Try, pleaded Nettle. Anna shook her head. It's no use. Everyone is gone. Look, I'll get some enchanter's nightshade, said Nettle, running to the door. It might help. It's quite a powerful herb. She ran down the path and was almost at the nightshade when she saw something moving in the darkness right in front of her. A small, humpbacked animal seemed to be wandering among the flower beds, sniffing at things. At first, Nettle thought it might be a dog, but how would a dog get in the garden? And it didn't quite move like a dog. It peered up, startled. Nettle, it said. Are you Nettle? Because your cousin's looking for you. She's on the other side of the wall. Where? cried Nettle, running toward the raccoon. He pointed with one finger. She pulled out her broom and soared over the wall. Bracken, she cried. Bracken. She swooped down and jumped off her broomstick. She hugged her cousin tight, and then she burst into tears. Bracken, I met, I, I think I met our mothers, and they're old. The fading got them. They're not witches anymore at all. They're little old women who've forgotten everything. They don't know who I am. They won't recognize you. Our mothers? You found our mothers? I think so, just now, said Nettle, the tears streaming down her face. And they don't seem like our mothers at all. But they used to be witches. Their names are Dee and Anna, like Adelia and Nicotiana. Don't you see? And they have our eyes. That's how I knew they were witches, from their eyes. I can't do the remembering spell just right, but you could. Then they may remember the door, where the door is. I'm looking for this door, this door. She stopped suddenly, noticing the human man who stood nearby. He's a witch friend. His name is Ben, said Bracken quickly. Magic brought him. Marry me, said Nettle, nodding. Where are they? asked Bracken. They're in the garden, right over the wall. The door's locked, said the witch friend Ben. We tried it. Do an unlocking spell, said Nettle to Bracken. You know lots of them. Bracken touched the lock, muttered a few words, and the door swung open. They all hurried through. Bracken, what's wrong with your leg? asked Nettle. I was shot by hunters. Nettle stopped. What? In the leg. It hurts. Wait here. Nettle ran ahead and snatched up herbs, heals all in heart's ease, and a sprig of enchanter's nightshade. Here, try these, she panted. Bracken undid her bandage and pressed the herbs to her leg. Did it work? asked the witch friend. I don't think so, said Bracken. She took a few wobbly steps and winced with pain. If it hurts to walk, just fly, said Nettle. I can't, said Bracken. For a moment, Nettle could not speak. You can't fly? It's not the fading, is it? Say it's not the fading. I don't know. I don't think so. Shoot your spark. Try it. Bracken did, and it was clear and blue. Good, said Nettle, weak with relief. I think it's the lead shot, said Ben, the witch friend. I'm all right, said Bracken weakly. She trudged on.